we're back. And everybody's favorite character, Basalt's Ben, has made a return. Last summer, Ben was promoted by his coach to a blue belt, entered a tournament where he really badly damaged his arm, and ever since I left the old gym, he hasn't been in any videos on my channel, until today. I brought Basalt's Ben with me for his very own gym visit. And with all the people that he could roll with, the first person he wanted to roll with was me. I've heard that he's really been focusing a lot on jiu-jitsu, he's settled down and focused on technique, and he even has something new to show us. Let's see what it is. What have you been working on in the gym? Lately I've been working on arm bars, and then <laughs> after that, Kamoros, and all the fun stuff. How do you feel the gym has been now oh. that Tyler is gone? Ten times better. Tyler just ruined the moment. What's your game plan on beating Tyler Spangler for this round? Oh, first plan, not to get guillotined. Second plan is to go around his guard. I want to go around it, flat on his side, and more of him, or just do my signature move. So what's your technique to win here? See, the trick is everybody thinks I only do guillotines, but I actually do more, Ben. Mm -hmm. I do ankle guillotines now. Yeah, right. I attack everything. I'm no longer a one-trick pony. Ben's got the Gatorade. Got his energy drink. Oh, that was good. He's ready to go. The round nice, starts ben. and we get to see two brand new things. Me wearing a gi for some reason, and Ben with his fresh purple belt. Apparently he got this at the end of February, so he's only had it for about a month, but it's up to me to see if he deserves to wear this thing, since that worked out so well for me before. Did you just pull guard? Not only am I staying on the old gym snotty list, but I also committed the cardinal sin of pulling guard, but I had a good reason for it. I was able to get on top of Ben, and I knew who's going to kick back into me, which allowed me to grab onto his ankle and throw on an ankle guillotine and to see how Ben would defend this. And let's just say, it wasn't the best. Now it's possible that I just got lucky, or that Ben's purple belt powers haven't activated yet. I'm lucky I haven't endured that Basalt's energy just yet, and we're going to see how Ben does the second time now that I've already tapped him once. What I will say is a big success is even though the round just started, I haven't been kicked in the face yet, so I'm counting that as a big win on my part. I'm well aware of Ben's extra techniques, so surviving the round without enduring one is going to be a challenge. But instead of focusing on his kicks, I'm going to be worried about him on my back, because he threw my leg to the side and he's trying to attack my turtle, albeit a little bit too high. I'm in double trouble as Ben's on my back, pulling me over my ankles and trying to choke me, and at the same time, I have to smell his Taco Bell breath right into my nose. And since I don't want to be the first guy to tap out to an odor, I pull off the Gracie technique of being in turtle and just sitting to guard. Now if Basalt's Ben, it's best to use his aggression against him. So you'll see I'm elevating his legs looking for an ankle guillotine until he scrambles his way out, then I push him over, pass his guard as not much has changed here, and now I'm looking for his favorite attack to take his back as Ben voluntarily gives it to me because he has a secret defense to somehow always get out of bad positions. And lo and behold, I've fallen for the trap. As I'm working to free my gi sleeve from Ben's grip so I can potentially set up a choke or different attack, he uses this as an opportunity to continue turning, keep control over my arm, and he seduces me into giving him guard instead of me just taking mount. And like a true purple belt when he's on top and he finally got me off his back, he lets me create space so I can stand up, stays on his knees so I can easily turn around him, and I take his back once again. Now we're in a similar predicament to before where he's controlling my arm, but I'm going to get the better of him this time around. I'm using this as a half Nelson, and when he decides he's going to try and peel and turn into me, I let him. Because this time around, I'm taking mount, which is a much better position for me as I have those huge hips that he's not used to, and because he's always turning to his knees, he's giving me an easy opening so I can start attacking a different submission, the armbar. Originally I was looking for a snare choke, but the way he had his left arm out there was looking better than Gabby Garcia, so you know I had to attack that as soon as I could. Now I get a little weary attacking Ben's arms, considering what happened last time, but it looks like Ben is maturing as he decided to tap out versus break it. God, just a guillotine game and that's it. It's in round 3 where I can see that Ben actually has calmed down and he's trying to work on his technique. And until of course some later rounds with other people. But Ben is actually trying to pass my guard by keeping control over my leg and trying to submit me with his forehead. Never mind, not much has changed. And just like Ben is stuck with his roots, I go back to mine by attacking with a guillotine, even if it is in the gi. The difference is in gi is that I like to use it as a sweep compared to a choke, which gave me a strong top position where I was again in the wrestling ride. From this spot, Ben has control over my arm. 
so I bring one hand to the other and this gives me an easy opportunity to throw my leg over and start hitting him with another armbar attack. While I don't have both legs in front of his face, I have a strong pinch with a triangle that doesn't matter even when he's rolling. I just need to keep everything locked and once I can extend the arm, I get another tap from Basalt's Ben. It's probably at this point where three taps in you're thinking that Ben doesn't have anything left for me, but that simply isn't true. Little did I know that Ben was actually taking it easy on me up until this point. And while I'm looking to try and pass his guard and play this gi game with him, he goes for his famous shin face choke. I'm not really sure what he was going for here, but instead of having my face crushed by some off-brand Goga Plata, I fall back for a leg lock so we can see how Ben's going to defend this time around. Now before the comments go haywire because I'm going for an inside reap in the gi, this gym loves training Hugh hooks in the gi, so Ben's going to need more defense than just calling an IBJJF ref. Ben ends up doing a pretty good job of actually freeing his leg, but he tries to come on top of me which is a big mistake because I had the better position. I shoved him over and passed him melee into side control and now I can work into the next attack, hopefully another armbar. But it looks like Ben removed one of his ribs for all this inversion technique and instead he spins out and I'm going to have to work on passing it all over again. Which takes me a grand total of 3 seconds as I'm reminded about Ben's guard retention and I get the hip staple and I move into 69 guard. Now while Ben may have his black magic, I have some of my own. If you can't give your opponent the reach around to check their oil to make the move, try tickling. It's a great motivator for people who move because nobody wants to get submitted by laughing and they'll likely mess up by giving you an opening. If you want a systematic approach to tickling your opponent, you can find my instructional on BGJ Fanatics where I'm tickling Craig Jones for the advantage. Now I was able to secure Ben's back because of my extra techniques and I'm trying to go for another armbar until I see another group is way too close to us so I jump off of his back and I go into a leg entanglement. Now Ben must not have liked my tickling because he went for his own technique which we all know is kicking and he got me in the face two times which didn't feel too great so I was forced to let go and he's still angrily kicking his way out. He parlays his kicking into a white belt version of a double leg. You can tell because half a second into the takedown, he's now in bottom side control, and one second later, he's mounted. Perhaps this guy should teach Ben some wrestling. Now no roll with Ben would be complete without a guillotine. So as Ben turns to turtle, I let go and I go to the front head, wrap under his chin, but he pulls his back to the mat as fast as he can. And after we restart and he's reestablished his guard, he kicks my legs out and forces me into the front head and I'm in trouble as he gets a high elbow guillotine, rolls me over, and he chokes me out. It looks like the student has become the master. Perfect. Great work by the world's best purple belt. I could have done better. The hard part was blocking legs. These legs are not used to submissions. Now what do you think you did right in the role? What was your best part? Well, the guillotine at the end, but I think not being flat, okay? So not having my back against unless I was tired and weak but I guess to try to control you more. Now Ben, people haven't seen you in a while. Is there anything you want to say? Well, I just want to say, being this purple belt is a truly, April Fools, I'm not a purple belt. Hey, who needs this piece of shit? It's old and horrible. And you got me smitten. Here's my real treasure, baby. All right, so maybe Ben's not a purple belt, but you know how you could be better jiu-jitsu? By getting gear from xmarshall.com. Ben represents the gear and so do I. They sell awesome jiu-jitsu gear such as rash guards, shorts, geese, anything else you could ask for. And by using promotion code Tyler10, you have a hefty discount on their website, which helps me and people like Ben so I can keep giving them gear. Check out xmarshall for all their new gear and you can look stylish just like Ben.